What's up, guys? Well, it's been a while since I came on here. Today's September 1st. Hopefully, I can push some videos out there. I wanted to start today off fresh. Haven't been on in a while. You know, I know there's a lot of nonsense, but at the end of the day, you got to stay positive. You know what? Get through the day, and there's always tomorrow, you know? But uh, today, I got a story about how the streets ain't never going to love you back, okay? And it's the goddamn truth. You know, me growing up, I grew up surrounded by a bunch of characters. Uh, you know, throughout the people in the neighborhood, whether it was a social club, whether it was a hangout club, uh, whether you hung out on the corner, you always had different kinds of characters in the neighborhood. You had the characters you knew you wanted to stay away from. Then you had the characters you knew they were crazy, but they were crazy in a good way. They always had your back. And then you had people you really couldn't trust. You know, that's how the neighborhood was. So, uh, you know, growing up, you learned not to trust anybody until you built that trust with that person, you know. But uh, this is another Bad Day Avenue story I want to talk to you guys about. This is about a guy by the name of, I call them Sally Dogs. Not Sally Dogs, Sally Horse. I'm sorry. They called him Sally Horse. Sally Horse was uh, originally a Harlem guy, did some time, was involved in the rackets, must have been involved in a murder. I think he was a part of the Purple Gang back in the day. And all those guys from the Purple Gang, what they did was they split them up amongst a lot of uh, crime families, whether it was the five crime families, a Jersey family. I mean, these guys were stand-up guys. They did a lot of work. Uh, and the ones that were Italian, eventually, some of the crime families in New York, I think three of them, I think it was the uh, Bonanno family, the Lucchese family, and the Genovese family. Uh, these are the guys that, uh, these are the families that actually took some of those uh, purple gang gangs and actually uh, straightened them out and actually even killed some of them, you know. But I tell you, growing up in that era at that time, what a vicious time, treacherous time it was, you know. I grew up, I was born 69, and I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and what a treacherous time it was back then. But this is a generation before me. So let me tell you this story, okay. So Banano Associate found shot to death in East Village, okay. Well. When I was around this guy, this guy used to come to Anthony Sparrow Social Club, okay? I knew him by Sally Horse. He was a short guy, just came home from prison. Uh, he had a little reputation. I found out a little about him. I didn't know him too well. He wasn't from my neighborhood, but he was from Manhattan. I think he grew up in uh, downtown Harlem, and he became a part of the Purple Gang. And, uh, you know, after prison, he uh, hung out with some banana guys, eventually... Uh, the Bonanno people straightened him out. And uh, there's a little story about him, you know. When I went to go visit Anthony Sparrow and Joe Benanti had the fist fight with Philly Dogs in the Brown Derby back in the day, in the 80s, uh, I had to go talk to Sparrow because of uh, Joe Benanti and Philly Dogs. They were both made guys. And when I went there that night, uh, Anthony Sparrow was there with Junior Chili and actually uh, Sally 
Horse was there too. He was actually in the club too that day. And I walked in with Paulie G. I told Anthony what happened, which I said that Philly dogs threw the first punch. But Sally Horse was there that night. And when we walked in, we saw Sally Horse. You know, when we saw him, we kissed him. Hello, hey, Sally, how you doing? Stuff like that. You know, we were neighborhood kids. But uh, Sally Horse was a guy that when I went to Anthony Sparrow Social Club, he was there. He was high and by. I would see him sometimes. He would walk in with uh, Junior Chili, okay? Him and Junior would talk a lot. He would sit in front of Anthony Spill's Social Club. And then after so long, I didn't see him no more, you know? But here's the story about Sally Horse. So if you can read this, I'm going to read it out loud to you. On August 17, 1992, the FBI executed a search warrant on the West End Social Club located at 1714 Bath Avenue in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. The location was controlled by Consular Anthony Sparrow, who was present at the time. Tazi was at the club as well, along with Bonanno acting captain Frank Porco, Bonanno soldiers Peter Consolato, and Dominic Monero, Lucchese soldier Frank Bellino, and a dozen others. Two illegal gambling machines were seized, okay? So that was 1992, okay, August 7th. That was 30 years ago, actually. On June 8, 1993, Tazi. Now, Sally Horse's last name was Tazi. Tazi was found murdered inside his East Village apartment. He had been shot once at close range in the back of the head. The murder was not sanctioned by family boss Joseph Messino, released from federal prison the prior November, and then in the midst of fully organizing the family, according to his brother-in-law, Sal Vitali. So uh, this short guy right here, he did a lot of work did a lot of scores. There's a story about him, actually. I'm going to read it to you. Okay. Bernardo Crime Family Associate was found shot to death execution style in his East Village apartment. Police said yesterday, Salvatore Tazi, 48, of St. Mark's Place, was found Monday evening by his cousin, who checked on him after repeated phone calls went unanswered. Tazi was found seated in a chair in his living room. He had been shot once in the back of his head, police said. There was no sign of forced entry to the apartment. Neighbors last saw him on the Sunday. His last known address was 1970 for allegedly hijacking. Now, his last known arrest was 1970 for allegedly hijacking a truckload of precious metals coming into the Kennedy Airport, according to Daily News, series of mob infiltration at JFK. Tazi was both, Tazi had both his legs broken for failing to tell mafia bosses about the heist. Charged with theft of interstate and foreign shipping, Tazi, then 24 years old at the time, pleaded guilty to a lesser charge and was sentenced to 18 months in prison in 1972. Over the years, Tazi has been spotted at various mob weddings and funerals, said Lieutenant Kevin McMartin, the 9th Precinct Detective Squad. However, these seem to be the extent of his overall mafia connections. So, uh, you know, Sally Horse, he was a knockaround guy, okay? But at the end of his life, like I always say, the streets will never love you back, okay? So they assassinated him and put a bullet in the back of his head. Obviously, whoever knocked on his door that day to come see him knew him very well and was a dear friend of his. But that's another story of the mob because uh, that's how the mob works. You get involved in the mob, at the end of your mob career, it's either debt, prison, or cooperation. I hope you enjoyed this short story. I just want to give you guys a couple stories here and there about stories that other people never really talk about. This is a story about Salvatore Tuzzi. Okay. He was a gangster with the Bananos. He was a part of the Purple Gang at one time in his life. And uh, he too was killed in his apartment. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on my next video. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. 
The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back.